Yeah, let me get one more uh, microphone so that I know the sound's going to be good. One second. You got m more redundancy yeah, than an Apollo mission. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that camera's rolling. That camera's rolling. All right. Hey there, everyone. Today's very special guest is my friend Destin Sandlin in Huntsville, Alabama. Now, Destin, you will recognize from the YouTube channel Smarter Every Day. Holy cow! He is also the co-host of the podcast No Dumb Questions, but he's been a great friend to Objectivity over many years. He's been to the Royal Society. He's helped me film things in America. But today, we are going into his magical cave to see some of Destin's own personal objects. Isn't that right, Destin? Yeah, it's exactly what I call it, the magical cave. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> but, but yeah, I... Uh... I have a lot of things and you do. Um, I'm excited. I really love objectivity, so I'm excited about this. Where are we going to start? What's the first thing? All right, yeah, so this is the filming room for Smarter Every Day, and I have all these shelves behind me here. And um, the first thing I want to sh show you is like something I can't show you in the UK. I want to show you this rifle. This is a, an object that's very important to me. This is a, a Springfield 03 A3 rifle. And this was the kind of rifle that was used in World War II. It's a bolt action rifle. And this rifle, I don't know why, but if I'm ever like, I just have a moment to think, I think about the mechanism on this particular rifle, this bolt action rifle. It's got a really neat feature in that you can pull the bolt out all the way and you can clean it and stuff like that. But anyway, my grandfather had one of these on the shelf when I was growing up and I used to go get it and clean it all the time and just think about how this mechanism works. And so that's that's an important object in my life is a Springfield 03 A3 rifle. I don't know, that's probably different than something that was important to you growing up, I would imagine, Brady. Well, I don't know, my father was a soldier and I often asked him about sort of the weapons he used when he fought in the war. That particular rifle, is that a different one? That's not your grandfather's? Where'd you get that one? Well, so my grandfather's rifle, the stock broke. And the last time I fired my grandfather's was for a video I made where I split a playing card with a bullet. The reason I did that is because, have you, have you ever heard of a guy named Dr. Harold Edgerton? In fact, that's one of my objects. Look at that segue. Yeah, so check this out. So, so I've got all this stuff here on the shelf, but there's one thing right here I want to show you. This is a book called Electronic Flash Strobe by Dr. Harold Edgerton. So this book is about a guy that developed a flash unit for some of the first high-speed photography. And I find this to be amazing. And one of the things that I love most about it is this particular edition of the book was signed by Dr. Harold Edgerton. Oh. You might not know Edgerton but without a doubt, you have seen some of the photos that he took yeah. because he is the father of high-speed photography. So here's some studies that he did of acrobats, you know, some of the first golf shots, stuff like that. But he was really well known for photographing bullets in flight. And so the reason I used that rifle is because Dr. Edgerton used the Springfield 03A3 for a lot of his firings, his photographs. This is like iconic stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, so I remember sitting in um, biology class reading my physics book because it had Dr. Edgerton's photos on it. And I thought, man, that's amazing. I have no idea how that works, but it looks like magic and I want to learn it. And so when I graduated with my master's degree in aerospace, my advisor gave me this autographed copy of the original Dr. Harold Edgerton flash book. And um, it was... My, my advisor was Dr. Bob Frederick, and it was signed the year I was born, 1981. So that, that means a lot to me. I, I know it's kind of silly, but amazing. What else you got? Feed the beast. <laughs> Feed the beast, okay, here we go. So there's all kinds of stuff. Let's, let's go up here. This is my dad's piggy bank from back in the day. It was a rocket. It was from the 50s, no, 1963, Merry Christmas, 1963. I keep oh. that in the background. There's Reap It Cheap. Yeah, but there's something that I think you would be very, very interested in. Brady, I know you love space. So I'm gonna bring these papers out right here. These are special for many, many reasons. So let me just show these to you. The first one is, check this out. It's an Apollo 8 medal. Yeah. And it was something that was given to the employees of NASA. My grandfather worked for NASA. It says, 
first lunar Apollo flight. In appreciation for your contribution to the Apollo Saturn project, the Apollo 8 crew carried metal in this medallion on man's first flight to the moon. Oh, Isn't that cool? Love that. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Apollo 8 was 1968, and it's sort of one of the forgotten missions in some ways, because this was the first time they actually went around the moon. They didn't land, but they actually went into orbit around the moon. It was an ama amazing mission. The famous Earthrise picture that everyone always loves to look at, you're probably looking at the Apollo 8 version. It's amazing. It's not actually signed by Frank Borman, but it's a, it's a pretty cool thing. Yeah. Okay, check this out. Right. Um, this is a letter. It's very, very thin paper. Very, very thin yeah. paper. And this was a copy. It's by Werner Von Braun. And this is a letter to the employees of the Marshall Space Flight Center thanking them for their contributions. And this dated July 16th, 1969, sent to the entire directory. And it says, it's with great pride that I extend to you, a valued member of the team, my deepest gratitude for your personal contribution to man's great goal of placing man on the moon. I thought that was really, really cool. He wrote this four days before. That makes you wonder what the other things that he wrote that weren't distributed, doesn't it? It's pretty interesting. <laughs> And then there's this. This is an original brochure for a party. This is the Lunar Landing Celebration Picnic, Open House, and Dance. And it's at Marshall Space Flight Center, but this is like the program of it. Ah. And check this out. If you look at the schedule of events here, Dr. Von Brown speaks, food refreshments, and then it says in here, two rock roll bands will play throughout the day. It's not rock and roll, <laughs> it's rock roll bands. It's an open house, so people could actually go to the center and they could do all kinds of stuff. I thought that was really, really cool. Let me show you a couple other things here. All so right. I've got this shelf here that's got some rather interesting stuff on it. So. This is the golf ball that I shot. I don't know how fast it went. I think it went like 550 miles an hour. Also, these are some of the, the baseballs that we fired from the supersonic baseball cannon. Nice. That's the kind of stuff I like to hold on to, man. I like to, if I ever do something like a technical engineering feat, I like to like keep that specific object. Can I ask you about one thing? Because obviously I've been watching your videos for years. The flag up behind you on top of the shelf. Can I ask you about that? Yeah, absolutely. This is a flag uh, that was given to me at Granddaddy's funeral. And I don't know, what do you do with a flag like that? You know, I just didn't really know what to do with it. So I just kind of set it up on the shelf. But I've got a lot of things like that that mean a lot to me. I've got like my 10 year service award for uh, working for the government. I've also got all of my astronaut rejection letters. I keep those. <laughs> um, I hope you take those letters to space with you one day. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like to keep all kinds of stuff like that. Things that um, don't have a huge meaning to a lot of other people, but do to me. I, I like to hang on to that stuff. This is one of the coolest things to me. This is what got me into engineering. So when I was in high school, um, there was this competition called the Mission Possible. And it was like a Rube Goldberg type machine. And a buddy of mine, Steve-O and I, we made the Mission Possible and we ended up winning state. And that was a big deal because we didn't, you know, we didn't really have formal engineering education anyway, but we went up against these big schools. It was really cool. So that means a lot to me as well. Can I end this objectivity video differently and share with you three objects that I have from my Destin collection? Yes. All right. It's yes, we've known, I would love We've that. known each other for like 10 years now. Oh, you know what? I have another object back here. So this is where we met. So this is a poster of the YouTube Education Summit way back in 2012. You remember that, we slid down the slide and stuff. And so, yeah. Smarter Every Day is on there. It's where, it's where I met Gray. And here's periodic videos right here. Let me show you my Destin objects. This sits on my shelf. I don't look at it as often as you would like, but it's still very precious to me. Oh, the Bible I gave you a long time ago. You gave me a Bible with my name on it, and it's got an inscription from Destin in the front, but that's personal, so I'll leave, I'll leave that. But that's, uh, <laughs> if I ever need to look something up in the, in the Bible, I can always check this one out. Although the writing's very small, and my vision's yeah. not as good as it once was, so. <laughs> that's the ESV version. That's, that's the kind that I, that I, I take with me to church. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really good pocket version. I like that version. I'm yeah. sorry it's not as well thumbed as yours is, I'm sure, but it's still very precious. <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> it's great. I appreciate that. Now, speaking of Apollo and space, 
some people might know that I collect autographs of people who walked on the moon and a glaring hole in my collection for the longest time was Neil Armstrong. But Destin and my wife conspired behind my back. And I do have a Neil Armstrong autograph that Destin made possible. So here's my Neil Armstrong signed picture. There you That's go. awesome. Famously, Neil Armstrong, he didn't do autographs very often. And so that was one that he did for an exception because he was speaking at Purdue, right? He did them for a long time and then he got a bit disillusioned with the market for them and things like that. So he pretty much stopped signing in his later years. And now the last thing, Destin made it possible for me to visit the vault in Houston where all the moon rocks are kept. Destin made videos there. He helped me make some videos there for objectivity, no less. Now, obviously, you're not allowed to take anything with you as far as moon rocks are concerned when you leave the vault. Huh. But I did keep one thing from my visit that day. And that is... Did you keep the booty? The overshoes. The little <laughs> overshoes that we put over our shoes when we walked in. It was the only thing we could keep. So these were my little over boots that I walked around in the moon rock room in. <laughs> There's probably bits of the moon on that. There may be, I'm sure there are a couple of the tiniest imaginable bits somehow on them. Man, this is fun. I love objectivity, man. Maybe we'll do part two. We'll do part two of Destin's show sometime later. Oh, there's there's more to be talked about there for sure. But thanks for taking interest in this. Uh, I've, I've never really had the opportunity to show people what's on the shelf. Oh, well, it was, it was really fascinating. Thank you so much for your time, people. Go and check it out. Destin, smarter every day. I'm sure you already watch his videos. Go and listen to No Dumb Questions as well, the podcast with Matt Whitman, which is excellent. I can't no, wait no, 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 don't worry. Don't worry about my stuff. You need to subscribe to Objectivity. This is a fantastic channel. <laughs> we're going to deflect from Smarter Every Day, and we're going to put the, the, the spotlight <laughs> firmly on Brady's channel here, Objectivity. One of They're my favorites. They're already here, man. They're already here. <laughs> I know you well enough to know that you don't create objectivity <laughs> to try to win the internet. You genuinely love objectivity. It's 100% authentic and it's real, which is why it's potentially my favorite of all the channels that you create, even though you have 50 million. Please go subscribe to objectivity and also support on Patreon. Wow, what better endorsement can you get than that? <laughs> <laughs> when the pendulum swings back on the impact, it takes the ribbon with it. And he can measure the distance that the ribbon travels. That's right, yes. That's clever. Now we have a lot of Benjamin Robbins notebooks in the collections because he uh, left them to the Royal Society. Uh, so these are uh, just examples of his commonplace books. You can see in this one, there are some rather nice drawings. One of the things Robbins was interested in was low muzzle velocity weapons. And uh, he's generally credited with the idea behind what became the carronade. Uh, in the British Navy. 